Next we are going to talk about respiratory cycle. I told you we are taking in oxygen giving out carbon dioxide. When you take in oxygen that is called as inspiration. When you give out carbon dioxide that is called as expiration. So here what is respiratory cycle it includes inspiration followed by expiration. So it's a continuous cycle we will inspire expire inspire expire so that is called as respiratory cycle. Next we are going to talk about the respiratory organs in various animals and then we are going to talk about respiration in human respiration in lower organisms. Respiration in lower organisms. In lower organisms like amoeba, flatworms, sponges, cylindrates, the respiration occurs through their body surface. For example, an amoeba is there. Amoeba is there. In the atmosphere, in the atmosphere, the oxygen concentration is higher. In the atmosphere, the oxygen concentration is higher. Whereas inside the organism, the oxygen concentration is low. In the atmosphere, the oxygen concentration is higher. Inside the organism, the oxygen concentration is low. So what will happen? The oxygen, it will move inside by a process called diffusion. By a process called diffusion by a process called diffusion. What is diffusion? It is the movement of molecules from the region of higher concentration From the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration. So what is diffusion? The movement of molecules from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration that is called as diffusion. So here you can see it, the oxygen from the atmosphere, the concentration is higher. Whereas inside the organism the concentration is low. So what will happen? The oxygen directly diffuses inside, the oxygen enters inside. These are the lower organisms that take up the oxygen by a simple diffusion process. Similarly, how they give out carbon dioxide? How they give out carbon dioxide? It's just the reversal process here. Inside the organism, the carbon dioxide concentration it will be higher. Whereas in the atmosphere, in the atmosphere, the concentration of CO2 it is less. Whereas inside the organism it is higher. So what will happen? The carbon dioxide diffuses out. Here the oxygen level is higher. The oxygen enters inside the organisms. Inside the organism the carbon dioxide level is higher. It moves out. This is simple diffusion process. Whereas in the case of earthworm, leeches, amphibians, they respire through their skin. If you observe the earthworm, if you observe the leeches, the amphibians, the frogs, the skin it will be always moist. 
they have a moist skin they have a moist skin so with the help of the moist skin suppose this is an earthworm is there the skin is moist and by again the same diffusion process the oxygen enters inside and carbon dioxide leaves outside again in the earthworms leeches amphibians the same diffusion process but it occurs through the moist skin so such type of respiration which occurs through the skin we call it as cutaneous respiration cutaneous respiration the respiration that occurs through the skin the respiration that occurs through the skin we call it as cutaneous respiration so cutaneous respiration occurs in the case of earthworm leeches and amphibians whereas in the case of insects centipedes millipedes spider will have a special structure called tracheal tube through that the respiration takes place in the case of insects the body it has three regions it will be there we call them as head thorax abdomen head thorax and abdomen in the thorax region in the abdominal region in the side of their body they have some openings here there are some openings for about 10 openings it will be there the lateral sides these openings in their body we call it as spiracles the openings in the body it is called as spiracles and these spiracles are connected to a tube like this they are connected to a tube this tube we call it as tracheal tube tracheal tube so insects they have this type of tracheal tubes it will be there through the spiracles the oxygen enters inside the small opening the oxygen enters inside and the oxygen through the tracheal tube it is transported throughout the organisms similarly the carbon dioxide diffuses out through the spiracles so both the spiracles and tracheal tubes are involved in the respiration process in the case of insects <clears throat> next is in fishes tadpoles and prawns in the fishes tadpoles and prawns how respiration takes place in the case of fishes fishes we all know that it lives in water in fishes there will be a region here <coughs> there will be opening here that opening we call it as operculum operculum on both the sides there will be an opening that is called as operculum so you can even see that here this region this region is called as operculum here 
and within the operculum when you open that inside you can see some red color streaks like this this red color streaks we call it as gills the rest red color streaks we call it as gills so this red color streaks it will be there this red color streaks we keep, we call it as gills so as i told you that already they live in water in the water the oxygen is not available in free form in water oxygen is not available in free form always the oxygen it is diffused with water we call them as dissolved oxygen dissolved oxygen it will be there so how the oxygen takes up by the organisms the water enters inside the mouth the water enters inside the mouth and through the operculum the water it comes out through the upper column the water comes out so it enters through the mouth and it comes out through the upper column when the water enters through the mouth comes out through the upper column the gills take up the oxygen the gills take up the oxygen so with the help of these gills with the help of the gills respiration takes place respiration takes place so now you can able to understand the lower organisms they have certain mechanism or they have a specialized structures to take up the oxygen and give out carbon dioxide whereas in the higher organisms in humans we have a clear structures are there a well developed structures are there these well developed structures it helps in the process of respiration we call this system as respiratory system the human respiratory system you can see that it contains lot of structures are involved in that nostril pharynx larynx trachea bronchi bronchioles and alveoli these are all the structures that are involved in the human respiratory system nostril pharynx larynx trachea bronchi bronchioles and alveoli